right what is up tycoons what's up traders super excited for today's video we're going to go over a series of etfs in this video that i think are good investments for the long term now remember this is not financial advice and just because i'm investing in some of these etfs does not mean necessarily that you should invest in them either rather this video is going to be informational and a little educational and just bring you guys some exposure to some etfs that i guarantee you probably never heard of so make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and we're just going to jump straight into it by going over the Pacer Cash Cows ETF series. Now, this series aims to provide capital appreciation over time by screening broad-based indexes to identify quantity, quality companies with high free cash flow yield. Now, there's the cows, C-O-W-Z, calf, bull, B-U-L, G-Cow, and I-Cow. Right now, uh, specifically, I like cows the best, C O W Z. And if you take a look here, what we have is a comparison chart. Okay, so this is since the induction inception of these ETFs. You can see that cows has actually outperformed the S and P five hundred here in blue. Now, calf, bull, G cow, and I cow, those have underperformed the stock market, but cows itself is up about ninety nine percent since its inception meanwhile the s p 500 is up about 80 percent since it's uh since the inception of this etf now <clears throat> we're going to dive into cows a little bit more here but what it does is it takes the top 100 large cap companies with the highest free cash flow yield and they're weighted by free cash flow the holdings are capped at two percent for each company at the time of rebalance and it's reconstituted and rebalanced quarterly okay now we have some of the details over here again you know cows c-o-w-z is going to be the ticker okay and you can see um just some of the details about it okay you know the net assets the shares outstanding um <clears throat> now what's really nice about it okay we, we have a nice graph right here but this is a free cash flow yield comparison now in orange here we have the cows etf so we can see it's at about 12.48 percent as of December 31st, 2022. And the Russell 1000 index is at about 3.64%. So it's much, much higher. Now, free cash flow is the cash remaining after a company has paid expenses, interest, taxes, and long-term investments. It can be used to buy back stock, pay dividends, or participate in mergers and acquisitions. The ab ability to generate a high free cash flow yield indicates a company is producing more cash then it needs to run the business and can invest in growth opportunities. All right. Um, and, you know, we have some of the details here and how they really like to go into things. Uh, but it starts off with the Russell 1000 index. Right. And then it screens to find 100 companies. All right. And then it goes by the highest uh, trailing 12 month free cash flow. All right. Uh, out of those top 100 companies. So really, really good stuff. Um, and I kind of just went over some of the details there, but that's our first one. Okay. Now the second one is going to be the Invesco water resources ETF ticker symbol P H O. Now, the reason I like this one is because if you look at what billionaires are doing right behind the scenes, billionaires have been accumulating large amounts of water really, and trying to, you know, essentially own the water supply and the water resources. Okay. Um, you know, there's a limited supply of water on the earth. Yeah. We're surrounded by the ocean, but we haven't really turned that and, you know, into something else to where we can really, you know, just clean that water. There are some types of, you know, inventions, okay. That can, you know, purify some water, but <clears throat> when it comes to overall, you know, we're the world, okay, we're expected to go on a global water shortage by the end of 2025, heading into 2030. Okay, that's not far away. So water is something that I personally think is just going to keep appreciating in value over the long run. And there may be a little bit of hiccups up and down. But I personally think that water is definitely going to be, you know, a good investment for the long term. As I just mentioned, you know, um, there's a finite amount of water as of the moment, and we're expected to go on global water shortages. And, you know, the people controlling that water and the water that we do have are going to have a lot of leverage and water is going to be, you know, very, very valuable, much more valuable than it currently is right now. 
in my opinion. Now, this is PHO, okay, the water ETF versus the S&P 500. And we can see that since its inception, this ETF has also outperformed the S&P 500, up about 247%. Meanwhile, the S&P up 224%. Now, there's been times where it's underperformed, okay? Uh, there's no surprise there, and it's a bear market right now. So, uh, you know, it's not really a surprise that the S&P 500 is underperforming. Um, and, you know, the S&P could outperform water heading into the future. Not all of these ETFs are meant to just be something that's going to outperform the stock market, uh, but, you know, rather just give you some other things to diversify your portfolio in, uh, perhaps if you do a little bit more research and you think that they uh, meet some of your investment requirements. Now, this is since COVID, okay? Uh, and since COVID, it's up about 44, 45%, and the S&P 500 is up about 37%. Um, the next one we're going to go into is going to be clean energy ETFs. Now, why invest in clean energy ETFs? Between the new White House Green Initiatives and a large number of automakers committing to making electric vehicles, the long-awaited green revolution may have arrived. Clean energy ETFs offer access to energy companies without having to pick and choose stocks yourself. If you want, you can find clean energy ETFs that specialize in solar or wind or just opt to invest in more broadly across the alternative energy industry. So the ones that I uh, brought up and the ones that I like, okay, are going to be TAN, Rays, Windy, CTEX, iClean, QClean, PBW, and PBD. Now we'll go over here. We have a comparison chart and you can see that um, essentially the S&P 500 has outperformed all of these. OK, um, but what I really like about clean energy is that this is something if, you know, not only is it going to benefit from Biden's recent uh, bills that he's been passing. OK, if you notice the uh, I believe the Inflation Reduction Act is what it's called. Um, a lot of money is going to be going towards clean energy infrastructure. And a lot of the companies within these ETFs are going to see a boost from that bill that they passed. Now, again, this is since their inception, the S&P 500 has outperformed all of them. OK, um, but this right here is since COVID. And we're going to go over my top three. OK, I like Q clean, I like tan and I like I clean. All right. Those are my three favorite out of all of the ETFs. Um, Q clean and I clean are more broad. And then tan is the solar ETF, the solar energy ETF. Um, and now all three of those since COVID are up much more than the S and P 500. I clean is up about 54%. Tan is up about 106% as well as Q clean up about 106%. Uh, the next one we're going to go into is Jeppy. Okay. Now, Jeppy, I have on here for the dividend yield. Okay. And the reason being is I know a lot of people like dividends um, and, you know, it attracts a lot of people, uh, you know, the concept behind dividends. But I really like the way that Jeppy, um, you know, essentially creates their dividend yield and they do it through selling options. It's really, really interesting. And I really like that concept a lot. But Jeppy is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, and it seeks to deliver monthly distributable income and equity market exposure with less volatility. Now, there's lots of expertise, okay? The portfolio managers have over 60 years of combined experience investing in equities and equity derivatives. Um, and the portfolio is a defensive equity portfolio that employs a time-tested, bottom-up, fundamental research process with stock selection based on their proprietary risk-adjusted stock rankings, okay? Um, and they have disciplined options overlay implements written out of the money S&P 500 index call options to generate distributable monthly income. Now, if that sounded a little confusing, essentially what they're doing is they're selling call options against the S&P 500 to generate that dividend that they're going to pay you guys. And so the results of that is they provide an attractive 12-month rolling dividend yield of 9.64% and 30-day 30 30 SEC yield of 12.51%. They're in the top quintile yield in the derivative income category, and it's competitively priced versus peers at 0.35%. That's the expense ratio that you're going to be paying as you hold JEPI. So, um, you know, that's what I like about it, okay, is essentially that they, what they're doing is they're coming in here and they're selling covered calls to generate income and they're using that income to 
you know, pay dividends to its holders. And it's, you know, it's got a very nice high percentage for a dividend stock. Um, now, you know, just because something has a high dividend doesn't mean you should invest in it. Um, but, you know, I know a lot of people are attracted to dividends and dividend investing. Now, this is Jeppy versus the S&P 500. And if you take a look, okay, since its inception, Jeppy is only up about 9% and the S&P 500 is up 38%. Um, now, of course, you know, you can look at the dividends and again, if you know, you're interested in this play, it's, it's mostly for the dividends, uh, in my opinion, but, um, you know, it has underperformed the stock market. Um, and you know, you can clearly see that on the chart here. Okay. Now the next one, I know you guys are wondering what about tech, right? I haven't had, haven't had much to say about tech. Well, I really like the Metaverse ETF, the Round Hill Ball Metaverse ETF, ticker symbol METV. Now, I know what you're saying. This guy's crazy. He's talking about the Metaverse. Well, think of it this way. The Metaverse is nothing more than technology, and the Metaverse ETF is relatively cheap when it comes to price, okay? This is below $10 a share at the time of this recording. And for that $10, you can get a very good exposure to some of the top tech companies. Now, when I say cheap, again, I'm meaning that the price is below $10, not cheap on a valuation basis, okay? But if you take a look, you know, the top holding is NVIDIA, guys. NVIDIA, chips are going to power the world. And if you believe in the metaverse, chips are going to be powering the metaverse too as well. So it's no surprise that one of the top chip companies out there, NVIDIA, is a large percentage of the weight of the ETF. Now, you also get some exposure to Roblox, okay? But Apple, I mean, look at this, guys. You get NVIDIA, you get Apple, you get Microsoft, you get Meta Platforms, okay? AKA Facebook. Now, obviously, they're going to be in the metaverse ETF, right? But not only that, you get TSM in here, Taiwan Semiconductors. You get Sony, you get Autodesk, Qualcomm. So, um, you know, definitely check out the full list of the holdings. But as I said, you know, the thing that I like about it is it's less than $10 a share, meaning that, you know, if you wanted to buy 100 shares of this and start selling your own covered calls against it, you could do this below $1,000 and start generating passive income off of the 100 shares that you own and just let that compound over time for the long term while also getting a great exposure to a lot of the top tech companies in the world. Um, so this is METV versus the S&P 500. Um, and, you know, they kind of picked a really, really bad time to uh, get their ETF started. So since its inception, METV is down 42%. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 is down 6%. Um, you know, they kind of came around right before this bear market. Um, and, you know, tech has been largely affected by this bear market. But, you know, if you're a long-term investor, these bear markets technically are going to be some of the best times for you to be purchasing for the long run, as, you know, you very rarely get these dips where some of the top tech co tech companies are down 20%, 50%, 70%. Some of them even went down 80%, guys. Um, so, you know, again, just do some of your own research, figure out which one of these ETFs you like, if you like any of them. Um, and if you want to invest in them, um, the next one, okay, is actually going to be the cybersecurity ETF cyber, okay, ticker symbol C I B R. And the reason being, okay, is cybersecurity is going to become more and more and more and more important, okay, as technology evolves more and more, um, you know, people are finding new ways to hack into your system. And really, your whole entire lifeline is going to be on the internet, and it's going to be in the cyber world, and potentially even the metaverse, okay, if things really fully transition into a, into a more um, in metaverse style world that we end up living in, cybersecurity is going to be hugely important, guys. And, you know, those companies, in my opinion, just have lots of room for growth um, as, you know, the, the world just becomes more and more dependent on technology over time. And so the cyber ETF CIBR is going to give you good exposure to a lot of those companies in the cybersecurity space. Okay. Now, if you take a look, cyber since its inception is up about 103%. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 is up about 96%. 
Okay, so it has outperformed the S&P 500 since its inception at a, at a you know small basis. But, you know, that again, that's not necessarily the point, right? When we're looking for long term growth potential, uh, I definitely think that cybersecurity has a lot of room to continue growing. Um, and, you know, the whole purpose of ETFs and this video being about ETFs is that um, you're not necessarily going out there and picking individual stocks, right? You're picking an ETF that's rebalancing itself, that's running the numbers for you, uh, and that just has a certain theme, right? And so if you like any of these themes, you can definitely check out these ETFs some more. Remember, none of this video has been financial advice, uh, rather just trying to bring some exposure to some ETFs that people probably haven't heard and, you know, not just say the same thing such as buy uh, VTI or buy VU and, you know, buy the S&P 500. Uh, there are other alternatives and, you know, those do come with risks accordingly. So <clears throat> hopefully you learned something new. And if you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, make videos just like this every single day, almost, if not every other day. So there's going to be lots of good content that you guys can learn from and really appreciate.